Kuchi, highs and lows, you're listening to Clara Hermit. This is BBC Radio London. It's the scene. It happens every Tuesday, 8 till 10 p.m. And uh, we have some great guests lined up. Now, I kicked tonight's show off talking about the fact that um, we were talking about names and your name, whether you like it, whether, you know, your name is one that's kind of unique or whether it's kind of quite a generic name and uh, perhaps you kind of have changed your own name. Maybe you have a nickname. And I've been asking you to just tell me whether you like your own name, basically, whether you're a fan of your own name or not. And uh, and, and if you want to get involved with this, you can call me 0800 731 2000. What I was saying is that my name's Clara, obviously, and my pet hate is when people call me Clara. <laughs> 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 and my next guest joined me on the show <laughs> was calling me Clara. Um, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> I've let him off. Danny Longlegs joins us in the studio now to talk all about his uh, his vegan food and recipes. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Sorry about that. What's my name? Too. Test it. Clara. Well done. Sorry about You're learning. Name. You're learning. <laughs> it happens all the time. All the time. But, I, you know, I, I think I corrected you in quite a polite way, didn't I? I wasn't rude. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't you I didn't like get you by the scruff of your neck. You let me know that that is not my name. Yeah. I prefer this. But the same with me. I prefer Danny. Do you? But not Danny. But yeah, but, but how would I know that? Because your Instagram name <laughs> exactly, yeah, is Danny. <laughs> so it's confusing. Yeah. Could you change it? No, I won't even change it. So oh, I'm stuck it. with Danny. You're stuck yeah. with Danny, but you prefer Danny. Yeah. Here we are. What made you go with Danny Longlegs as the name if you prefer Danny? Oh, do you know what? It was my, it was when I was young. Because I was so tall, my grandma used to call me Danny Longlegs. I was like a daddy longer. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Play on words. Yeah, it's just stuck from then, really. Yeah. And was that a school? Was that like... Um, yeah, school. After school, people call me long legs. Um, so yeah, it just kind of stuck off it. I'm with it. Yeah. Plus, no one calls me Daniel anyway. Yeah. It's either Dan or Danny. So, yeah. Even though you don't like those, then you'd rather Daniel. Yeah, 100%. Is that something you've decided as you've got older, though, that you'd rather be called Daniel? Did you mind that? from young. Like, even when I played football, it'd always be Dan. Like, right. when they right. Oh, you know where he's going. So they just ignored you yeah, and did what they wanted anyway. Exactly. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> um, so my first question is, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, good. It's the last day of January. I have right. been a mad month. Yeah. But yeah, um, I'm feeling good. Are you feeling good? Have you eaten a lot of food during this month? Because uh, it is Veganuary, so that's it. You know, for anyone who's listening who doesn't know. Veganuary is the month of January where, I mean, it's actually an organised thing where you can go and download and get recipes from the organisation Veganuary, but it's a month where, I guess, like restaurants do collaborations with vegan yeah. brands, where vegan brands bring out loads more stuff. So um, I'm guessing for you, as someone who's kind of a, a, a vegan food influencer, that you have been knee deep in vegan food over the last month. Yeah, since I'd say the first week of December it started. Mm. I've been going to restaurants, everyone's got new menus out, um, new products, people are sending me stuff. Um, Don't show off. It's, the, it's like the busiest month for, vegan, yeah. for vegans, you know, it's, it's, it's insane. Yeah. But I wish every month was like this. It'd be brilliant, but yeah. unfortunately, it might die down, but hopefully some of the new products can stay. Um, like we were talking about restaurants earlier, they've got some new stuff as well. Mm. Um, there's some other brands that are bringing out new stuff, so... Yeah, I think it's the best month of the year. Exciting times. Does your waistline grow during this month? Because, <laughs> you know, a lot of people start January and they're like, oh, I'm going to go on a diet because it's January. <laughs> Impossible. But for, for vegans and especially for people working in the vegan food industry, you can't go on a diet because you've got all this stuff all to this do. All food. And yeah. also, like, January is known as, like, the worst month of the year. Mm. Everyone's depressed. Everyone's broke. Um, you don't really want to go to gym because it's cold. But when you've got all this new food coming out, it's a buzz. So I think it's a good time to be vegan in January. So, yeah, I'm, I, there's no way I'm stopping eating food in, in veganity. No, I, I mean, think, it wouldn't make sense. You yeah. just get bigger trousers. It's fine, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? You just got the January trousers out. That's it. It's absolutely fine. Um, so tell us a little bit, Daniel. See, Daniel. <laughs> um, what made you want to start creating vegan food content? Um, it's when I was at uni. Mm. Um, I was bringing in my food and everyone was just curious. Like, what are you eating? Why are you eating... Um, this seedy looking stuff. I was like, it's called quinoa. <laughs> like, people have never even heard of it. So I was like, I need to like show people this is normal to eat. I'm not weird. Um, so when I finished uni, I was like, right, I'm going to create some content. And that's when lockdown hit. Right. So that's when I started creating some content. And it kind of went from there, really. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed showing people like the Caribbean food you can eat, like, vegan as well. Um, and that is cheap, healthy, and it's pretty normal, you mm. know? So that's what kind of drove me to create more content. 
because I guess that this kind of idea that being vegan is really expensive, I think is probably one of the biggest misconceptions about veganism, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. I remember doing my lunch and dinners for like eleven pounds for the whole week mm. at one point. It was like calamine, kale, quinoa, chickpeas, a bit of plant and avocado, and you can buy those in your local market anywhere. They're so cheap mm. in comparison to like pieces of chicken or beef or whatever. So. Yeah, there is a thing of like veganism is expensive. Um, it can be, yeah, if you choose to eat out every day, but if you're at home cooking, it's, it's hard. I know you didn't mention Aki in there because it's about that's five pounds a tin. <laughs> I'm like, oh, can I? You're right, okay, yeah, or like once a month. That's yeah, as I say, that's a, that's a Sunday treat. <laughs> yeah. That's a Sunday treat, payday treat. Yeah, exactly. When when you can afford it, you can get your hands <laughs> on that. So, when did you, um, when and why did you become vegan? Um, it's kind of two reasons. First one was I was going to my butchers and I was getting my usual eggs from there. Mm. And he was telling me that where I go to uni is where this that egg farm is. So go past there and have a look. So I went and had a look and I couldn't see nothing. It was like proper caged off on the packet. It was kind of like free running egg, chicken, sorry, free running chicken. Um, and it kind of made me do some research. Like they're free running, why can't I see them? Mm -hmm. Then my mum at the same time, she was telling me that she was going to cut down on meat because of the cholesterol. So why don't we just try and go vegan then? Um, don't get me wrong, it was tough because this was like seven years ago. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just went back to kind of eating Caribbean foods again. So eating a lot of yam, a lot of calamine, a lot of sweet potato, a lot of plant thing. And just kind of went from there and just did, um, removed certain foods as I went along. So removed eggs, removed chicken, removed fish, etc. Um, and yeah, from there, seven years, vegan now. Incredible stuff. All, um, I'm almost eight years, so I'm just a little bit ahead of you. Oh, um, okay. uh, where does your, you mentioned obviously about some of the recipes that you cook and that they're like Caribbean inspired. So is that where your recipe inspiration comes from? It's like, these are the things that I used to enjoy eating with meat. Like, can I recreate them without meat? Or like, whether it's kind of like idle food and recipes that already exist. Where do you get that inspiration from? Yeah, definitely my heritage and background, being from Barbados and the Caribbean as a whole. Um, most, I say most days of the week, we grow up eating rice and peas and chicken and mac and cheese and all these beautiful foods that you grow up on. And then you want to kind of recreate that as a vegan now. So like things like mac and cheese now, we've got so many mm -hmm. um, dairy Obviously. free cheeses that you can now make mac and cheese. Um, you can use um, heart of palm to create ackee and saltfish. So there's loads of alternatives or substitutes that you can use. Sometimes they're even better, mm. um, as long as they're seasoned correctly. Like using a mushroom to recreate tikka, I think is absolutely insane. So a lot of people, if they were blindfolded, they probably wouldn't know the difference. But yeah, I think coming from Barbados and being able to eat an ice food, which essentially were vegan anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a blessing. It made it a lot easier to, try, to transition. Yeah. Um, for anyone just joining us here on BBC Radio London, I'm currently talking to Danny Longlegs, uh, aka Daniel, as he likes <laughs> to be known, uh, all about um, vegan food and recipes. I have to ask you about the uh, the plantain sandwich and the plantain tacos. Do you think there's anything that that people that you can't do with plantain? No, nah, definitely. But literally, if I haven't got plantain, it's it's, it's a, there's a problem. Like I, there's always plantain in my house. The one thing I have every single day, twice a day, without fail. And I just love recreating recipes using plantain. So if I want a sandwich, I'm like, I don't want bread. I might have sourdough bread, but I'm actually going to make, let me use plantain instead. Or I want a taco. I don't really want to go to the shop and buy some taco shells. I just use plantain instead. Yeah, so for people listening, you're using the, the plantain as a replacement for bread. Yeah. So you've got like the sandwich filling in between two pieces of, of plantain. Yeah, so I had the, the Beyond Meat mince yeah. in the middle, yeah. and then just created the sandwich using the baked plantain. Um, tacos were the same, maybe yeah. ackee and some black beans, and then wrapped that in the taco using the plantain. It's such a versatile um, thing. Most people probably think it's a banana, yeah. but it's not. It tastes completely different. Mm -hmm. But as you know, it's one of the best foods you can get. It, so. is. it really is. And, um, and do you eat all the food you make? Because Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Well, I don't know if you share it with people because you some you, you must have to make quite a lot of food. Um, I because I meal prep because right. I go to the gym. For you, or... yeah, I, I just put it in Tupperware containers and just space it out throughout the week. Sometimes I'm not gonna lie, I eat the whole thing, 
<laughs> like literally the other day I made a uh, jerk cauliflower I haven't posted it yet yeah and I topped it with ackee cheese right cheese sauce and I literally just sat there and ate the whole thing I was like I shouldn't have done that but it, it you is couldn't stop is. yourself no I couldn't it was so good wow um so yeah sometimes you end up eating everything yeah that's kind of my excuse for not cooking because I cook enough for four people <laughs> and then I eat all of it um in one go I don't meal prep which is what I should do or I cook enough for four people and they'll be like half a portion left and I can leftovers though but I convince myself I think leftovers are better than yeah. the actual thing but I convince myself if I've left half a portion that's a good thing it's not a good thing um what's your go-to quick kind of like dinner or lunch recipe like if you've got you haven't got a lot of time you want to create something really quick what's the thing that you do over and over again um time wise I always say 20 minutes max anything past that it's long yeah. so 20 minutes my thing is quinoa yeah um Tofu, yeah. I bake it in the oven, um, bake the plant in, have some kale, and yeah, that's it. What do you season the tofu with? Because it doesn't taste of anything. Else. So, uh, do you know what? It varies. Sometimes I'll have jerk sauce with it. Yeah. The next day I'll have like a Korean red paste with it. The next day I'll have it sweet and sour, and I just kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I do salt and pepper with chilies, almost treating it like a piece of chicken. Mm -hmm. You know how you just have like peri peri. I treat the tofu the same. I, I personally can't eat tofu without seasoning. Yeah. I love seasoned food. Um, yeah, tofu doesn't taste too much without, no. uh, without something in it. Uh, what's the one thing that you wish everyone knew about vegan food? That it bangs. Right, okay. <laughs> it, it bangs, banging. <laughs> it literally is banging. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people see my page and they, they are so intrigued. They're like, okay, I'm going to try that. Because yeah. it looks good, so it must taste good. And the people will message me like, Bro, like, I tried that, it was sick. I'm like, yeah, of course it is. Mm -hmm. It's just food. Like, as long as you season it right, it's good. Yeah, like, yeah. And I, I think sometimes when you label things vegan, it puts people off because they have a, you know, a certain kind of um, preconception about what a vegan is or what vegan food is, which isn't normally a good thing. And to be fair, I did as well. Yeah. Vegan. I, I've kind of stopped, yeah. not stopped using the word vegan, but I, I almost use the words like plant-based yeah. mint or plant-based burgers instead. Yeah. Because we were talking about it before we came here, and the, when you use the word vegan, sometimes it just it just scares people. Mm -hmm. You automatically think, oh, I don't want to try that. Yeah, so they think you're about to give them a lecture or something like that. <laughs> Which I am, but yeah, yeah. maybe that's a comment later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask you what's the one ingredient you can live without, but I kind of feel like we uh, already know the answer. Probably, yeah, I say, yeah, plant in. In the summer, though, <laughs> in the summer, yeah, it has to be mangoes, but throughout the year, definitely plant in. Yeah. Just because you can fry it. You can bake it, you can boil it, you can you can do whatever you need. It's to an all rounder, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, if people go to your page, they'll see all the different things that you've done with it. Um, what are some of your favourite places to get vegan food in London? Um, recently, oh, I'd say Eat a Vegan mm -hmm. is one of my favourites. Obviously, it's not part in there. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I would say recently, I went to um, Sweetie Bean, had yo, a yo sushi. Yeah. The teriyaki steak thing they had amazing absolutely amazing and where else do i really like i would say burger yeah like junk food i like junk food when i'm out because i would say that i eat a lot of healthy stuff i'm balanced at home when i come out i want that dirty greasy burger yeah but yeah so burger's your favorite yeah cool so as well as the food content you also create some kind of funny skits about being vegan and it's kind of i guess like cliche things that either people say to you when you say you're vegan or experiences that you might have as a vegan person. What made you want to start doing that? Do you know what? A lot of it was when people were like, oh my God, you're vegan, so you must be so healthy. Do you, do you get ill? I'm like, well, yeah, of course, you get, still get flu and still get runny noses and colds. So I did one where, you know, I'm vegan, I meditate, I do all this amazing stuff, and then by 7 p.m. I'm asleep. I'm just, just like a normal person. Yeah. But people would just think that you're some guy that meditates and you know you're, you've got candles everywhere and insects burning and stuff. Wrong with that? No, there isn't. Not <laughs> at all. <laughs> but but you, there's there's lots of different ones that you've done. So I think the one I saw was looking at today is kind of around that that I'm vegan and people are like where do you get your protein from? Yeah, you know, that's the ongoing. Um, yeah, I went to leave the bedroom and I'm like, no, I'm not leaving the room today because I know someone's going to say, oh, where do you get your protein from? Yeah. Um, and obviously, like, yeah, we need protein, we don't need meat. Mm. It's one of those things. We need calcium, we don't need dairy kind of thing. Yeah. But, yeah, I guess it just came from 
those questions being asked over and over again, I'm thinking I can make fun of this mm -hmm. in a way. So, um, and you have. Yeah. And I'm sure other people are like, because it's so relatable, right, to people who experience the same thing. Yeah, the same regurgitated questions. Yeah, yeah. over and over again. But you need those questions because I feel that sometimes it, it means people are curious. So they want to know more. Yeah. So it's a good opener sometimes. Yeah. Um, what have you got planned for 2023? We're in it. It's been Veganuary. It's been a really busy month for you. And as that we start to, well, we're almost in February now. Yeah. What, what else have you got planned for the rest of the year? Um, hopefully exciting. just creating nothing, nothing exciting yet, but hopefully just creating more content and just doing, just doing me really. Yeah. Just doing better content, working with loads more brands and pushing veganism to more people. Is there any other kind of vegan influences that you'd like to collab with? Um, good question. You've got to be careful, now, haven't you? Yeah. Not set anyone <laughs> up. Spot. Like, yeah. Not gonna hot anyone up or just miss anyone's name. Obviously, right? yeah. My boys, I'll say vegan ease off. Yeah. Eats by will. Um, and then obviously penny vegan munch. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. yeah. I'd say those. Show. I think all of them have been in the show at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Those three. Friends of the show. I think like, that would be quite good. What would you do? Um, it's part of the show for you, but yeah, that'd be good actually. Yeah. I'll, I'll come up with some ideas. You can host it. And you okay, can... thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Put you through your paces. Maybe some, oh, I don't know. Yeah, like some kind of challenge you think you could mm, That'd be interesting. Yeah, we'll, we'll work on it. Will would win, though. He's very determined, so. Mm, yeah, well, you don't know what the challenge is. That's true. That is true. We, can, we never know who's going to win until we decide what the challenge is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, for people listening, Daniel, where can they find you? If people want to see some of your videos, check out some of your recipes, where do they need to go? So, I'm Danny Longlegs with a Z. That's on Instagram and on TikTok. I used to do YouTube, I'm still on there as well. But yeah, mainly Instagram and TikTok, Danny Long Legs with A Z. Cool. Well look, thanks for being with us on the show. It's Thank been great to me. find out more about you and to kind of share the uh, the vegan food love. And um yeah, I'm glad you had a great veganuary. Yeah. And amazing. I wish you a very good and prosperous twenty twenty three. Let's see what happens. Yeah.